103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, September 13th, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Cowabunga! Uh, <laughs> surfer dude, okay. Uh, oh, the turtles, uh, man. Yeah, the turtles, what are you talking about? Uh, or if you really want to do it, howdy doody, howdy doody, howdy doody. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Oh yeah, but okay, okay. That? Well, it's it's Chief Thunder Horse or something. Thunder Thunder Thud. It Thunder was. Thud. I heard yeah. that. See, I used to watch Howdy Doody. Mm. There we go. I did too when I lived in <laughs> Chicago, and I was like five. But yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. Our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs, uh, George Red Leader, and uh, J. W. Kennedy. Howdy. Welcome all. Howdy. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there's a streaming atheist call and video show? Yeah. That broadcasting here in Knoxville? Yes. Has been for over 10 years. Did you know Absolutely. that one, Bat? Listen, I'm surprised you didn't know about Howdy Doody when you're telling me about Bozo, the world's most famous clown. Yes. No, Bozo the no. Clown. Popular show in the 1940s, had a franchise television program. I remember program. Bozo. Right? Super, super funny guy, and I'm just glad that you're bringing up all these yeah. old school shows. They're one really of the few clowns that kids won't, aren't afraid of, I'll put it that way. But no, that's not <laughs> it. <laughs> but uh, we do a video show, a call-in video show here in Knoxville, and it's been going on for quite a while. And we'll tell you more about it after the mid-show break. If you'd like to search for a digital free thought radio hour and use a messaging function to send us live questions or comments. If you'd like to email us with questions, you can send them asked to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to be talking about dreams today, which means a lot of different things probably to all of us, but we're going to find a really, really cool thread, maybe even get metaphysical with it. But before we get into that, I throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Arr. Miracles particularly specious, claimed done by a Mesianic Jesus, were secret ambitions of Saul as the political agent named Paul, hmm. whose fictions do not but deceive us. Uh, 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 namaste. Yeah, namaste, yeah. Dread Pirate, was that an original? That is an original. Dread Pirate, you need to start writing these down. These will be, like, you make this <laughs> a book. This is going to be something that's, a that's great. Mm. Yes, yeah, this is wonderful. <laughs> Uh, it, it is raining really bad here. I don't know if you guys heard that thunderstorm behind me wow. that was going on. Uh, flash flood runnings going through Tennessee. Hope everyone stays safe. Larry, how you been? Are, have you been dry? <laughs> so yes, uh, we got some rain last night. I uh, walked out to a lot of puddles on the deck this morning, but it wasn't raining. Mm. So I let mm. the dog out and do her thing without worrying about having a wet dog come back in. Yeah. Yeah, that's, other, yeah. Other than that, I'm doing fine. Cool, Thanks. cool, cool. The seas are, are rather calm here in Stormwind. <laughs> yeah? British Columbia, pretty much everything's okay? Yeah, oh, yeah, and, and there, too. <laughs> nice. jo George, you're, you're in, the, in, the, in the area. I don't know if you're in the Knoxpatch area specifically, but uh, how, how are things over where you're at? You're well, uh, you're, getting me, you're getting me frightened now because... Uh, my car is running a battery charger right now. Mm. I'm charging my battery, and it's sitting out in front of the house, and I don't want the charger to get rain. I think it'll so. be okay. I think they plan for that. I think it's okay. But, I think it'll be all right. But I just I just checked the weather forecast on Weather Underground, and it says mm. it's not going to start raining until 4 o'clock, but I don't believe it. You don't believe because it? Because I'm not a believer. Hey, we can talk about. I'm that. not a believer in any much of anything. We'll get a confidence scale on except that. Except disbelief. That all out. I believe in disbelief. 
<laughs> okay. Work. Dale. It's not raining. It's not raining right now here. Good. Good. Dale, how you been since last week? Well, as you recall, I used to be a low down dirty deist. <laughs> and then I uh, converted to atheism. And then I decided that general atheism was just not atheist enough. And I re converted to atheism 2.0, which is the militant branch of atheists. And now you're even on that. No, even that is not good enough. That's not being a good enough atheist. So now I am uh, atheist plus. Anti-theist? <clears throat> no, atheist plus, a, a, uh, a uh, designation that was formed by Jen McCrate. Okay. Which means what? A long, long, long time ago. What is atheist and plus? Athe what? Well, atheist plus means you're just as militant as anybody else, meaning that you, uh, you know, are all for the border patrol in Portland, Oregon, uh, kidnapping people off the street so they could be deprogrammed away from Christianity. But you also want a, uh, you have to specialize. This type of atheist has to specialize in something to benefit mankind. Some of them do humanism, some uh, do feminism, uh, some do Black Lives Matter, uh, and, and that's the sort of thing, that's the way it goes. Okay. Trying to be a true atheist, unlike, you know. So like a true Scotsman atheist. Cool. Exactly, precisely. Okay, I'm gonna have to look that up. JW, how you been? It's been a while since I've seen you. I've uh, been all right, just working and uh, prepping for college. I might take a couple right. of classes next spring. Um, or I might wait till the fall. I don't know, but I'm just, that's just been my life lately. What Hopefully. have you been planning on? Uh, so majoring in. Want, yeah, majoring in, if you don't mind sharing. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty set on biology. Um, nice. I'm not sure if I want to do field work or if I want to be a teacher yet. Oh, but, uh, okay. biology is definitely, definitely seems to be uh, at the top of the list. So considering your background as training for a pastor, are you comfortable talking in front of a lot of people? Like would, would teaching be a profession that you'd be excited to, to be involved in? Yes. And I was in theater in high school. I was in public. I was on the public speaking team in high, high school. I took a, um, I actually recited from the book of Job because I was, you know, being religious back then. And I actually, how I recited it in front of people, I went, I got second in the state of Virginia that year. Wait a um, second. If this was a church program or like a, no, I, I, the, um, I, it was, uh, on public speaking, we have different options, different things to do. And I chose poetry and I chose to kind of smuggle in the scripture as as poetry and look at you you were one of those dirty christians <laughs> it was like hey you're an atheist well god bless you i'll see you later like oh well, okay. he was what one he's trying to do we have to give him so, credit uh, for his uh, movement. anyway i uh -huh. yeah i that so i book of job doesn't even run in theater doing? and i've been come i've always been comfortable in front of a group of people so i'm oh, doing JW. And why not that's true you are a stand-up so yeah counts jw did yes, you sir. do any debate um, I'm, I didn't do any debate in high school, but I definitely look forward to it when I go to college. So, Ooh, very cool. Yeah. So it sounded like you had a lot of dreams, JW. We're just dumping into that. And I think it's kind of cool because there's a lot of things that I aspire to be as well. But if I were to just say dreams, what do they mean to you as like, uh, <clears throat> more like an extended topic of the show? What does it mean for a dream to you? Like, what does, what does that mean to you? If, I, if we're just generally talking about dreams, what first stands out in your mind? Let's not equivocate. Are we talking about nighttime dreams? Or are that's we what we're, about... that's the question, Larry. <laughs> well, I mean, there's the, that, that, I'd go with Larry on that one. It seems to be two different um, cultural references to dreams. But yeah. I think since you're asking me about what I want to do with my life, um, that yeah. would it kind of tied into uh, dreams for the future. I'd just say I, I see dreams as more like hopeful plans that never always go exactly the way that you expected them to go. Sometimes oh, not at all. Um, okay. <laughs> but they, I think there are much more than plans. Dreams are more of like, have a lot more emotion tied to them, a lot more yearning and uh, hunger to them in my mm. opinion. 
So you're an atheist. Is it possible for an atheist to actually have dreams about in the future? Or is it all just here and now chemicals and, and rocks bouncing off each other? <laughs> mm, I mean, I, I, just a bag of chemicals, man. It kind of, it's kind of both. I mean, I, I still have dreams about, but I'm trying to keep a sober mind about, you know, things, like I said, not, not ever going to go as I plan them to go. So, mm. yeah, I feel in the same way too. Um, there is the other idea of dreams though, in the sense of like, Hey, you're going to sleep and you see some movies or have some experiences, maybe some out of body experiences. Maybe you have people talking to you, spiritual beings coming and visiting you and saying, Hey, you're pregnant. <laughs> deal with it it's gonna be awesome i know it's mesopotamian area and bronze age and you can be killed for that but it's, it's gonna work out if, trust me if a dream told any of us that we were gonna be pregnant oh yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> but uh jw what's what's your opinion on that and then we'll go around uh what's your opinion on dreams in the prophetic or metaphysical sense well they just seem to be my dreams seem to be a process of just visually processing things from the day or the week um, into some kind of abstract and random Salvador Dali type, you know, uh, experience. Hmm. Um, like, for example, if I if I'm somewhere in a place, let's say I'm at a store or something, I'm looking for um, looking for something that I'm trying to buy, and I, I go down on the bottom shelf, and I, I go, "Oh shit." I'm sorry. Um, I saw uh, like, JW. Classic like, I, uh, like I thought I saw a snake or something or, or a big spider and it turned out to not be that, or maybe it was a big spider for some reason. Um, that night I'll, I'll dream about something that that'll find its way into my dreams or something like that. Or mm -hmm. if I have a toothache, I'll have a dream about all my teeth falling out or you sure. know, <laughs> it's just weird yeah. like that. I get those dreams all the time. I hate those dreams the worst too. Uh, yeah. Um, does that necessarily mean that they're true or, or no, no, I think it's just my, my mind processing things. That's as far as my knowledge and opinion <clears throat> goes on that. Hmm. I'm going to throw the question out at George. What do you think about dreams in the sense of, can they actually tell you things that'll happen in the future or maybe even things that should happen in the future? Like, you know, prophetic, like in the future, if you don't do this, this will happen. Like is, can you think there's validity to running overnight simulations in your mind about what might happen in the future and what you can do to stop it? Well, we're, we're talking about two different kinds of dreams here. Okay. Uh, the, talking about the cool the ones. Dreams overnight. Okay. And then uh, I, I believe um, was Barack Obama a book called Dreams of My Father was, or am I thinking of somebody else? No, Barack Obama. Yeah. I think, was it? Yeah. So um, to me, I don't remember my dreams very, very much. I, I never have. Mm. The the only dream I ever had that I was was very prophetic was I being buffled downstairs, and then I did, and I stopped. Was what, would, what was downstairs? <laughs> you kind I think of broke he, up. He dreamed of falling downstairs. I think I was falling downstairs, and and so I I subsequently did fall downstairs. I was mm -hmm. wearing metal shoes with leather mm -hmm. heels, and I slipped. I was uh, going swim. I was going to go swimming at a community center. Mm -hmm. I I fell down the stairs. I grabbed myself before I hit the bottom with so much force. It took like three guys to peel me off the banister. Wow, I'm sorry. I was a kid having I stopped having the dream, of course. <laughs> that was but dreams to me in this context talking about um, wishful thinking for the future. Mm. For the future of the planet, of the society of the United States or you know, hopefully that will become more like Canada, maybe. And then Canada's got its problems. So, um, <laughs> Dred shaking his head. No, Canada's perfect. That's about all I can. Yeah, that's his... well. And then I remember there was this guy called the Newt of the North in, in Ontario. And I forget his name, but he was pretty bad for mm. everybody. Mm. As I recall. 
Dred or George, I'm going to throw this to you. Um, you kept having a dream that you would fall down the stairs and it eventually happened. Do you think the dream caused that in any way or was that always a possibility? Absolutely not. Okay. A absolutely not. But falling down the stairs sure cured me the dream. <laughs> <laughs> sure cured the dream. Nothing else to say about it. <laughs> so the weird thing is I've always had a dream where I would have a math class. I would just have like a random math class. And I was like, you didn't know you had math class? Like in college. Like, oh, I, yeah, yeah. you didn't go to math class for the last four weeks? You're way behind. I'm like, how am I behind? How am I behind? I hate that. And then I got my PhD. And now whenever I have that dream, it's just like, I got a PhD. I don't have to do school anymore. I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to go to school again. I'm done. And that's like, it has been a good way to solve that. I know my mom has, for example, on multiple occasions, um, had dreams where lions were chasing her. And she says, I know I'm dreaming whenever I see a lion chasing me. Like, that's my knowledge. So what I do in my head is I just start flying away from the lion. And I'm like, wait a second. You know you're dreaming. You know you can fly. Why not ride right. the lion? Why not be best friends with the lion? Play video games. Do whatever you want. It's just a weird thing. George, what do you got? Well, now that, now that you said that about your mother, I just, you know. Uh, what are you going to say about Sometimes mom? it takes me a while to, well, not going to say about your no, I'm mom. Just but, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, I, I have had situations where I had some kind of a fearsome dream hmm. that seemed so real that when I woke up, I was still in the dream. Mm. And I'm just wondering if that I'm happens to, too. You know, yeah. Dread. Uh, how about that? In other words, uh, yeah, every once in a while, this has happened in my long life that, that the dream has been so real feeling mm. that when I came out of it, I still was there. It took a while to acclimate to reality. Let's throw this question around then. Dredd, I'm going to start with you. Have you ever had a dream, like a, a, a nighttime dream that felt so real that it felt like you're awake? And how did you deal with it? What, what kind of like lucid dreaming, you mean? Well, I feel like lucid dreaming, you're in control. I feel like that's okay. a distinction. I mean, more and like... You know you're dreaming. Yeah, I feel like more like a, not necessarily sleep paralysis, but like <laughs> dreaming paralysis where it's like, how do I wake up? Like, I know I'm sleeping. I know this isn't real. Or like, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's just like, I woke up, but I'm still dreaming. I was like, oh no, it's like a Twilight Zone episode. And you're just like, how do I wake up? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't say I've ever, ever experienced that in particular. Hmm. But back at, back in my 20s, I, uh, I was, I was, you know, kind of into the occult and all that kind of stuff. And Carl Jung and uh, Mysterium Conjunctio and, you Hulk know, Hogan. All, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and actually, I kept a, a dream journal for a year. And, um, and you know, trying to, you know, string together a narrative uh, where one dream actually had some kind of impact on the next dream or, or that these were all strung together as a sort of a, uh, a portrait of some kind of, a kind of unfolding story in my uh, subconscious. Hmm. Uh, it was really difficult after a while to try and put that together and, and trying to make sense of it. And, and it's like anything, any kind of random, uh, you know, random uh, series of events or uh, images. It's like peri periodolia where, you know, you see images in clouds. Uh, oh, yeah. An elephant is not really in the cloud. It just looked like an elephant because we look for patterns. And, and so eventually I, I had ceased uh, recording my dreams because I just realized that there was no sense to be made of it. So if Boudreaux was on the call, he would actually take umbrage with the fact that you just said random despite the fact that mm -hmm. these seem to be things tied to your personal history, things you've encountered during the day. Have you seen any sort of pattern when you took your journal for a year? Like, hey, I ate a lot of salami, and next thing you know, there's a salami monster. You're like, oh, that's, that came out. That's, that's typical. Or was it literally just, now you're a ballerina, now you're Samuel Jackson, now you're planet Earth, now you're some, like, is, was it truly random, or were there any kind of ties to what you normally experienced? I, I don't think so. Don't think so that there was a, any tie to any of your personal experiences. Oh yeah, but I, I don't think it, it was it was in any kind of meaningful way. Mm. I mean, I there was just mm, no way I that I could find a you know a, a deeper uh, a deeper fact that was tying 
my dreams to my real life experiences other than just sort of uh you know the uh the tv uh tv snow after uh, the sure. channel signs off you know what i mean yeah you're not the only person i know who has a dream journal what do what 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 is the intended thing that you're supposed to get out of a dream journal do they interpret the dreams for you is there like a legend or a guy that tells you if you have these sets of things showing up in your dreams oh yeah of course i mean there's all kinds of those i mean you can go walk into any bookstore and, and find probably you know especially in a cult bookstore and mm. uh, find all kinds of books that are going to tell you what the uh, specific images in your dreams mean, you know, ah. but, um, you know, I, I don't know. I just, uh, after, you know, after that amount of time, sure. Trying to uh, build a register of, of what these individual images meant. Mm. It just, it was nonsense. Larry, I'm going to go to you next, but I think it's really interesting that you could go into making a dream book with the idea of, man, I wish I could fall in love one day. And you influence the kind of dreams you have that then you can interpret and, and post ad hoc support the, the original conclusion you were looking for, for the fir in the first place. Like, it seems like one big circle. And I can see yeah. the same thing from like even the Bible where it's just like, man, I really hate my neighbor. Let me read my Bible. Oh, it says, hate your neighbor. Ah, ha, that's, that's proof that he's going to hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not an expert on dreams in it by any, any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but I, I feel like if, if during the day you feel like vulnerable, you're going to have dreams where things are coming at you and you're having mm -hmm. to fight them off. If you feel strong during the day, you may have a, a hero dream or something like that. Or if mm. you're thinking about science fiction all day or what, just go to bed after watching a science fiction movie, it may influence your dreams. But um, a couple of things that uh, I'd like to bring up, maybe uh, somebody can answer is, one, why do we forget our dreams so quickly after we wake up? Larry. Uh, and I understand that uh, if you finish your dreams and you wake up naturally, you don't remember much about them. But if you're, somebody wakes you up in the middle of a dream, then you can remember an awful lot about them. And the last thing I wanted to say for it, uh, I left with the podium, as it were. Last night, I had the strangest dreams in the world, and they were claymation. <laughs> you can oh, imagine. that's awesome. That's and awesome. It was weird and funny, and I enjoyed it. But it was, oh. there were some pretty bad situations in there, too, so who knows? Anyway, getting back to the why we forget it so much. Uh, Dale, why do we forget to address that? Yeah, Dale, why don't you unmute yourself muted, and come back right? in? Dale, you're muted. Because you got to rate. <clears throat> there we go. What do you got? Uh, the reason you don't remember your dreams so well, unless you've woken up during one or at the natural sleep when you wake up, is because the brain does not produce the chemical necessary for long-term memory. Therefore, dreams do fade very quickly and... Uh, you may, one that you may not remember, you may have a clue during the day, you see a shoe or something and you remember, oh, I, I dreamed about that. But the reason you don't remember is chemistry. Seems like deja vu too. Yeah, like you, where, you, okay, where you don't remember it, but you still can recall it. What do you think? Dread Pirate, what do you have? Uh, well, I was just gonna a comment there is that uh, one thing I found uh, during the course of, of recording my dreams over that, time is that the focus I had to remember my dreams made me or allowed me to uh, remember my dreams uh, much more often and in much more detail. Ah, cool. um, and there was always uh, little tricks as well as just, you know, having a, um, a light and a book with a pen by your bedside so that, you know, during the course of the night, if you, if you woke up to, you know, go have a pee or something like that, that whatever you were dreaming of at the time, you just take a, a quick note of, of some of the more salient details. And then all of a sudden it opens up, um, they become trigger words that open up the, the larger dream experience as it were. Yeah. yeah. Del, right back to you. Yes. Yes. Being aware of the fact that you're dreaming and waking up and having the memory of a recent dream, short term memory, then if you were to go through it at that time, you place it into your long term memory. And yep. very often, as he said, there's an anchor, you know, you remember one particular aspect of it, and then yep. that will open up the rest of the dream. And then you went, oh, it went like this. So yep. it's a very good idea if you want to remember, keep a journal and write it down as soon as you get up. Larry, what do you got? 
I just wonder uh, how many people do lucid dreaming. Uh, I've done it in the past, uh, particularly when I find out I'm dreaming and and I can stay in the dream. The first thing I want to do is fly, and it's really <laughs> that hard to do. Um, <laughs> you, you just imagine yourself flying up, and, and you you do that, and it's very it's a lot of fun. I, I, I love doing that. It's love, just love, I don't rem I don't notice it very much. Can I, I ask mean, this question for George? What very much. is lucid dreaming? Forget about it. <clears throat> Larry, what's lucid dreaming? I have no idea. I yeah, have no idea. Uh, so, yeah. But, when you're dreaming. I'm asking, I'm asking the question for George. But for not, George. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, no, I, I don't know. But but uh, uh, Larry just triggered a memory in me. You know, some, something I remember is uh, when I was really young, I too dreamed a lot about flying. Hmm. It was first person. You know, I wasn't watching somebody fly. I was doing the flying. And uh, it was, yeah, it. <laughs> it was somewhere around the time of the big flight down the stairs. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Dale, I'm going to look up that chemical. I think it's interesting. Um, I've always had similar dreams, and they've been always so similar that I've just never had the ability to part them from each other. They've always just been like, this is the food dream or the general nightmare. <laughs> I'm a simple person. So it's just like, hey, is this bacon? It's the bacon dream. Cool. I, like, I don't have to wake up remembering like what food. It was just like, no, I was just eating food. That's all. It's pretty good. Um, I wonder if you could have so many of the same kinds of dreams that you don't bother trying to remember them, like phone books, numbers. Like you can see all the numbers, but it's just like, yeah, they're just numbers. It's not a big deal. Dale, what do you think? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about there. Is it possible to have dreaming? so many dreams that are similar that you don't go through the trouble of trying to remember them in detail? Like, who's well, to say you might that want to talk about recurrent dreams if you're going to talk about that area, but that's that's not really what I was wanting to comment on. You asked George what lucid dreaming was, and I was going to help out. Go for uh, lucid dreaming is a condition that usually, most often occurs during a nightmare where you're saying this is a dream and you realize that you're a dream and you just functionally wake yourself up. Now that's where it mostly happens. There are some religious uh, sects that uh, have that practice lucid dreaming. And since we we're going to do this today, I brought a machine. When I was in the military, can we see that? Yep. My okay, when I was in the audience. military, Okay. It looks like an EKG. Anyway, it is exactly an EKG. It also can do other pressures uh, depending on the uh, uh, what you hook up to it. The military taught me how to interpret dreams. I got kind of interested in it. Then later on, I got interested in lucid dreaming, and I took this EKG machine and modified it so it would read the uh, muscle activity in my eyes and read... REM stages and then give me a visual clue by a flashing LED that I was dreaming. And this is one way that you can achieve lucid dreaming if you want to uh, just entertain yourself you know, eight hours a day or whatever, you're not entertaining yourself. But uh, you could uh, conceivably do a lot of things. Uh, I partic I'm particularly fond of meeting Lieutenant Colonel Samantha Carter. Shout out to you. And uh, uh, in a lucid dream, uh, you also can. There also is a controlling of the dream, where you control the atmosphere of the dream. For example, you may have had the experience where you have had the TV on, and you incorporate the TV into your dream. As a matter of oh, fact, that's yeah. probably where the life after death sensation occurs too. Or how I um, keep ending up in episodes of Matlock. Right. This is yeah. wondering how those things work. The, the visual gives you. Okay. Cool. We're actually heading towards the bottom of the half hour of the show. Uh, how about we get back to it when we come back from the break? Larry, why don't you take us out? And then I got some questions about this machine. Sure. Uh, this is a digital free thought radio hour. Uh, we'll be back right after these short messages. The ACT cool. and wanting to get that perfect score, but I felt so ashamed because I was extremely unhappy. Probably think 
3.9 FM, WOZ. Hello, and welcome back to the show. This is the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dodder 5, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, September 13th, 2020. The uh, second half, as I said, we uh, let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Go away. Start one. Go away. <clears throat> Go away. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. To find them, go to rationalist.org and click on their upcoming events. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about Knoxville's Atheist Call-In TV show. Well, it's called, and if you want to go to YouTube and look for it, it's Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. Um, they have a streaming version that they send out on Monday, I think it's Monday nights now. Uh, also, you can find their archives by going to YouTube and search for Free Thought Forum Knoxville. This should be 10 years of archives of that show. Also, if you're interested in getting involved with the TV or the radio show, come to an Ask Meetup or RET meeting or Facebook pages and let us know. You could be our next co-host or guest. On the show with us today, we have the Wombat. Cowabunga! Guest J.W. Kennedy, George, uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, and Red Leader. 
and we were talking about dreams, but yeah. what are we going to go to now of the love? No, no, no. We're not oh. talking about that. I had, I want to talk about what we were, we just finished off, which was the 2008 movie Taken starring Liam Nielsen, which is really, really great. It starts <laughs> with that scene where he's on the phone and he's like, you just kidnapped my daughter and I don't know what you want or if you're looking for ransom, but I can tell you one thing. Where is the love? Where is, Where is the love? love? The love. love. The love. Guys, we're going to go over the love that you sent to us in our listener feedback section. This is comments directly from our YouTube channel based on our last week's episode, which was there's an atheist in my foxhole. <laughs> and what can we do? To reach out to Christians to help them know, like, hey, even when you have hard times, it's still okay to to not believe in a God or result to prayer. You can actually get yourself out of bad situations. Um, Dada's Trading Room, who's a fan of the streaming by Dread Pirate Hicks, says, hey, you know, it happened again with the audio being out on Dread Pirate side. Uh, but you know what? I could hear all the rest of you guys. I have no problem watching you the next day when it the feeds uploaded to YouTube. Also, I have nothing against you guys talking about the same topic. Use a different word than that, but <laughs> we were all basically in agreement from the start of the show. Uh, it would be cool to see if maybe we can play some devil's advocate in the future and see if we can have more simulated conversation. But again, Dada's trading room has no problem with us all being in agreement with each other and being friends. That's cool. Uh, thank you, Dadas. Next comment, Nathan Matthew says, fear is an incredible motivator used as religious coercion. But when we demonstrate that it is possible to navigate hardship without religion, we dispel the aphorism that there is no atheists in foxholes. As Doubter5 noted, if someone gives credit to religion for our resilience, that is a great opportunity to explain mindfulness in lieu of a religious crutch. Doubter5 with the shout out. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. That was really great. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Isaac says, some can be talked with with, I'm sorry, some can be talked with whatever theist and some are not like many of my family. Though, even if I was still Christian with facts, some rather tinfoil hat nonsense instead. Either way, most never chat about other than having to mention a deity or rarely anything else. At least as an atheist married to my Christian husband, there is some room for conversation, although not much beyond that he knows that I'm an atheist and does not care. So I'm, <laughs> what I'm guessing from that is like, hey, you know, uh, she's in a relationship where she's married to a Christian. The Christian knows that she doesn't resort to praying to get herself out of situations and maybe that's like the best way for christians to realize oh there's another option just watching the people that we love and the friends that we hang out with um work the sums out of bad situations i think that's really true thank you jennifer john court says guys we got a lot of comments <laughs> we have to dedicate a whole cool. show that's great all right john court says i think se is a great way to get believers into the foxhole earnestly attempting to understand someone's view on the religious belief leads to a positive interaction where hopefully any negative assumptions they had about atheists can be questioned and i think that's really useful too um mm -hmm. i i i love talks when i'm talking about god with a christian and then they ask me questions knowing that i don't have that same belief like i don't hide the fact that i'm an atheist when i'm doing my talks and when there's that turnaround and they're asking me questions and i'm answering them genuinely it's like oh man i never thought about it that way oh that's cool no that seems pretty good so far <laughs> i don't like the label but i really like everything that you're telling me i'm like dude you don't even need the label just just consider that like there's other options than the one that you the dogma that you've been raised in it's like yeah i really don't have a good reason to believe that that's like wonderful uh thank you john coward l footman says what if you discuss each other's views on metaphysics i think that'd be a good opportunity for a future show um metaphysical maybe we'll should get in that um yeah i'm not sure we have any <laughs> differing None. views on metaphysics <laughs> uh well you know uh, dale changes his on the week so like we can probably tune on to that uh Are you ready uh so thank what you is metaphysics or yeah. what are metaphysics? Hey, we'll say that for the next. We'll say that for the next episode. But uh, thank you guys so much for all of your comments. If you want to have your comments reviewed over the show, feel free to list them down here on my YouTube channel. Let's chat if you're watching this here or on uh, Dread Pirates upload or Doubter Five's multiple links that he'll provide at the end of the show. Thank you guys so much for your feedback and the love. All right, so we're going to go back to dreams. Um, I had a question 
uh, Dale had presented to us an EKG, which he used to help him have more control over lucid dreaming. And I wanted to know the mechanics of observing your REM sleep to enabling yourself to have lucid dreams. What's the connection there? Like, how does that machine help you lucid dream more effectively? Well, I had to modify it a little bit, <laughs> okay. but... Uh... But uh, you can see right now, you, I've got a trashy little EKG line going. I've got myself hooked up, okay. but it's not, hooked, it's not configured for the lucid dreaming right now. But the way it works is, uh, the way uh, the, the mechanics of it is that you have an electrode. Now, this is the first generation. Like, I'm, so, I understand that it monitors your sleep, but you're saying it triggers lucid dreaming. Like, how does it right. do that? No, 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 no. It doesn't trigger lucid dreaming. What it does is it gives you the message while you're in your dream. For example, you have the electrode set up. You're doing your rapid eye movement. The machine mm -hmm. realizes that there's muscular movement, and then you have it set. So when there is so much muscular movement within a, a certain, certain period of time, then that sends a signal to uh, some lights that you have over your bed or wherever, tiny little LED lights, and you can see light through your eyelids. So the light gives you flashes. Now, I modified one machine so that it would actually talk to you and say you are dreaming or give you the flashes. You're supposed That's, to train oh yourself so that when you wow. hear this message, mm -hmm. you start thinking, well, uh, I could be in a dream right now. And it's and it takes a little bit of practice, but uh, I have yet, I have yet to meet Sofia Vergara. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, you can have dreams about anything. Now that's one type of lucid dreaming. Another okay. type is where you create a framework, like a, a, a beach or a uh, cowboy cattle drive or something. And then you have that be the framework for your dream. So it gives you a signal while you're sleeping that hopefully you pick up and maybe wake, yes. takes you out of a deep sleep and then yes. you're in a realm where you can control the sleep dream a little bit or at yeah. least be so sleepy. You're that already you're like, in. Eh, I'll just daydream while I'm like half asleep anyway. I think it'll work. Yeah, because some dreams I've noticed there's that I, it's really strange because there's like a level of control that mm. I have in some dreams that I don't have in another. Like mm. if I'm when I'm, when I'm lucid dreaming, when I realize that I'm dreaming right. mm -hmm. and I try to control something, sometimes I can change the environment and sometimes I can't. And sometimes mm -hmm. I can fill in the right. blank and sometimes I can't. It's, it's very, it's, it's not always the same. Yeah. Larry, you said you fly whenever you have the opportunity to lucid dream. Why don't you teleport? Why don't you like space travel? Like why? Because what flying does... is fun. It's like, why would you uh, <laughs> walk from one end to a, of a roller coaster to the other? You'd rather yeah. ride it. But it's you can teleport and save yourself time. And go <laughs> That's a good point. Other things. Yeah. I, I like the, I like the movement. I like oh, the okay. Okay. Do you, is there a limit to how high you fly or is it just like, no, mm. like, do you fly as oh, fast yeah. as you walk? Like what, what are we talking about um, here? Jeez. Is it Superman flying? Superman. What are you doing? Think yeah. of Superman. But okay. I, I generally don't get more than a couple hundred feet off the ground, and I, I can just fly around and see the trees and the buildings and things like sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. Usually okay, open okay. area. What's so, one thing that's funny is uh, um, one thing I like to do is I like to fly in cardboard. Uh, like, have you ever tried to hold a big piece of cardboard up and, and yeah. the wind gets it? And it sure. If you hold it just right, you can, you, it can lift you off the ground in dreams, <laughs> which is kind of strange. Yeah, it would have to be a little bit more for me. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that's kind of fun when you know okay. you're doing it. So you guys have some pretty exciting loose dreams. Mine is never that entertaining. It's always about texture for me. Like, if I'm thinking, if I'm dreaming about something like, as like simple, basic really? thing, like a, 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 a case, for my dreams that are lucid, it's like I can zoom in and see all the details on the surface of something and like almost touch it and I can feel it. And I can be like, oh, I really understand what this is. It's like uh, broidery leathered and has like this really nice smooth texture to it. And then I wake up, but I've never been chased or, or flew in and stuff like that. Doctor Five, what do you got? One thing I've always heard, and I find it myself kind of true, that mm. if, you're, if you're in a dream and you want to know if you're dreaming, look at your hands because your hands won't resolve in your what dream. is that does that mean you can't see your hands you, you, you won't see the fingers they, they won't be individual uh you look at your hands and they'll be like that or something um so like low I'm, polygonal you, things yeah but you're saying you can actually touch things and feel things and it's tactile do you yes. see your hands when you're dreaming 
Yeah, uh, on multiple things. I know everyone dreams a little differently. My my trick for if I can if I need to know if I'm dreaming is can I read something? So I will right. like. I was going to say that. Okay, okay, and I, I okay. think I got that literally from Batman the Animated Series because it was a scene where it's like he opens up his library and he can't read any of the text. And he's like, oh, I know I'm dreaming. Uh, the Riddler's got me in some sort of contraption or something like that. But I've since tried to do that, and it's like. There are words there, but I can't make sense of any of them. Right. And I can't tell you what letter is what letter. I'm like, this is fake. Okay. All right. What am I doing in the library? Time to time to start looking at carpet. Because <laughs> that's all yeah. I do when I lose a dream. I'm like, look at this carpet. Yeah. Uh, and if I if I if I even make out words, yeah, mine right, sometimes the words will just like I can read what the word is, but the hmm. words will always it, it's yeah, never it's makes a jumble. coherent sentence ever when I'm yeah. reading in a dream. Yeah. I wonder if that it means that reading is at a higher brain function that we can't do in our subconscious. And that's like the trick for it. Dale, do you have an opinion? Tell us an observation. Yeah. Reading is, it's a lot of people mention that reading in numbers is a problem. Uh, but, but not there. Are, there are plenty of exceptions where somebody has read signs mm. and names and, and actually seen numbers and had numbers said, so it's it's a generally yes, and it may be related to what part of the brain the memory is be, the uh, skills are being drawn drawn out of. Mm. All right, I wanted to bring up another interesting point. Uh, I think Dell, you brought this up as well. You said chemicals are are triggering in our brains or not trig. Our brain behaves biochemically differently when we are asleep compared to when we're awake, and I am also aware that there are people who probably even wrote influential books like the Bible, you might've heard of it, who have probably have been influenced by saying this nicely, um, burning bushes, <laughs> especially when it comes to like writing things that are like in revelations and stuff like that. Cause there's some real psychedelic imagery that's going on in those, in those seven chapters. headed dragons, seven headed dragon. Oh man. There's just one wearing a crown. It's just bizarre things that you feel like could, could only come up with a guy who is basically looking at the world, pulling out things, and then going on a trip of some sort, and then combining those things in an interesting way yeah. to like explain. Like Yeah, yeah. So I wonder, like, can you, is there validity to altering your biochemistry while you're awake and having dreamlike states while you're awake and pulling more accurate information from there now that you have your higher faculty brain functions along with your chemically induced brain functions. Like if I have a, if I have a prophetic, if I go into like a, a, a smoking tent and come out and be like, Larry, I have found the, <laughs> I found out that there's real life beyond this planet. I just had it. I'm awake. I'm not asleep. This isn't just some dream. It's this isn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like this isn't some dream. This is a real thing that I had while I was awake. Is there any validity to it now that I'm not dreaming anymore? Nor asleep oh, anymore. it's not that you weren't dream that uh, you weren't dreaming and, and, uh, you can be awake and be on peyote or other psilocybin or psycho psychedelic drugs. And, uh, your mind is altered. Your perceptions are altered. Uh, there it can, your brain can provide you feedback, uh, without you wanting it to, or without external, uh, stimuli. Uh, how many times have you heard that, uh, people have hallucinations or auditory hallucinations or you know, hearing their mother's voice after the mother's been dead for, you know, years and years. Uh, the, if the brain is not stimulated, it will provide its own stimulation. And that's mm, one of the right. main things you got to take away from the psychology. Mm. Mm. JW. It's like the, the pareidolia that I was talking about, you know, where see, you're seeing your brain is, is just, it's a, it's a pattern machine. Um, that, you know, infers meanings and, and things that don't necessarily have meaning. So I want, man, I really wonder what would happen if we get to the tech point in technology where we can just straight up just record our dreams, maybe even put them like on a USB drive. And we realize that it's not even like a movie. It's just a series of patterns and bleeping, but our brain is like, oh, I'm going to turn this into a thing. Like, wow, our brains are just making a pattern out of stuff. Oh, I'm blowing GW's This mind. is so good. <laughs> it's on my mind right now. No, like, if, what if our brain is just looking at these random things and being like, let's make a story yeah. out of this. Let's make yeah. this like a flying adventure. Larry, what do you got? Well, it's not only that, but uh, the things that you remember seeing are memories now. They're not, they're no longer visions. Exactly. And your memories are malleable. Yes. Uh, they can change over time. 
they, you can manufacture them. Pe people make memories out of suggestions that they yep. hear. Uh, Absolutely. Just, and the longer the time between the time you had the experience and the time that you're relating it, your memory can degrade or change. Dread, I'm going to throw this to you after I make this one point. Uh, Dread, or Doubter 5, there might be a possibility that there is no such thing as dreams. And it's not so much a question of why do we keep forgetting our dreams. It's more like, why do we even imagine that we have them in the first place? When it could just be a thing that we try to reconstruct based on like social inferencing. After we wake up, we make these manufactured ideas of like, oh, you had a dream? Well, I had it too. You had the Holy Spirit? Oh, I had the Holy Spirit too. Yeah, it's all the same thing. But it's just like our Dude, brains Ty, like. you're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> just think, it's think like about really it. deep question. You thought a lot about this before we came today. And I'm like. Well, one of the things that really gets me is uh, how many of you have heard about the type of uh, anesthesiologists, uh, the anesthesiology that you have that you don't go under, you don't repress pain. Yeah. Uh, they give you something that makes you forget the pain that you <gasps> had when you were in Oh, that's surgery. nutty. Oh, uh, that's nutty. That is nuts. I mean, yeah. talk about mind blown when I first yeah. heard that. That's crazy. Uh, but I understand that's uh, mainstream um, pain suppression at this point. Dread, you, I saw your hand raised. What's up? Uh, well, I, I was thinking about one aspect of dreams um, that I uh, encounter often is is time dilation. Mm. Um, you know that that time doesn't flow um, in a steady sort of way. It, it can vary. You know, it can it can be compressed. It can be expanded. It can you know wobble uh, to and fro sort of thing. And and I I always find it fascinating. You know, waking up after you know particularly a memorable dream, uh, you know, essentially having, you know, lived a couple of years or, or maybe half a lifetime. Uh, it, it actually reminds me of an episode from uh, Star Trek, the next generation where Picard uh, encounters that artifact where he lives an entire lifetime within mm. a, a few moments sure. and then awakes with the memory of an entire lifetime in addition to the one that he's actually in yeah and, and it's just about this compression of time or this dilation of time I, I find that very interesting very nice so you're saying that time is kind of like a wibbly wobbly timey wimey type of thing yeah like doctor who says <laughs> yeah <Dale? laughs> exactly what do you have for us Dale? You're talking about waking anesthesia. Propofol is the most common drug. That's where you are awake during the uh, procedure. More often than not, colonoscopy might be something that uh, yeah. someone might remember. And uh, you don't remember it. As a matter of fact, you have no sense of time passing whatsoever. And uh, what was the other thing? Break dancing. It was something that someone just just now mentioned that I well break dancing. Never mind. Ninja Turtles. All right, it's okay. Power Rangers. <laughs> hey, speaking of, uh, <laughs> I, maybe this is. I'm going to try to refresh your memory. I like the idea. I like the far out idea. Like it's not necessarily something I'm convinced of, but like the idea of all dreams are just manufactured memories that we are coming up with after we wake up. That's our brain trying to rationalize where we've been since we've been unconscious for the last eight hours. No. Thank you. And the idea could be like, hey, you know, I can imagine yesterday with me wearing a, a blue shirt, even though I wasn't wearing a blue shirt. I can very easily do that. It's very easy to construct memories. And it's very easy to have high confidence in my memories that I had. But without physical evidence, it's just my word against my own brain. And I'm willing to take my own word <laughs> against my own brain a lot of times without realizing how biased that could actually be. And so that the dreams that I actually have, I may not actually have just one big dream over the entire night. I might have thousands of very small vignettes or lengthy dreams that have been going through time dilation. And maybe I just remember the last 30 seconds of something and I wake up and I'm like, oh, I must've been dreaming about those, those things for the entire night. It's like, no man, you had an entire adventure. <laughs> this is like, you, you just remember the last act of like this whole epic saga that you had. Right. And, and uh, that. you have now convinced me that there is now so much more exploration to be done in the topic of dreams that I didn't even man, know. <laughs> it's like men there in black. Questions. When you get your memory erased, you're just like, oh yeah, I was a postman my entire life. She's like, wow. no, you weren't. You were such an amazing human being. Oh, oh well. Uh, George, did you want to weigh in on any of this? Did you have any comments? My only comment is having had surgery a couple of months ago, um, the anesthesiologist sent me a couple of texts and he said, 
would you please give me feedback? Hmm. Please post your feedback on this website. Uh huh. Uh huh. Man, that's a how can thing. I do that, man? I was asleep. Hey, that's a good. There's a good joke in there somewhere. <laughs> right. DW, are you paying attention to that? <laughs> that's really, really good. There's good. Like my anesthesiologist had a survey of asked me how I did. It's just like any, if I put down anything, you did a bad job. I don't know. There's something there. It's a really good point. <laughs> good point. All right. Yeah. So. Uh, as we wrap up today's show, um, I just want to say, hey, dreams are really cool. This was a cool topic. And I'd love to get metaphysical with you guys in the future. But until then, JW, where can we find your stuff? Um, JW, I got two, two YouTube channels, uh, content coming soon. Uh, nice. One is uh, JW Kennedy for my music and comedy. The other one for my uh, street epistemology is going to be Speak Your Beautiful Mind. Um, and I have two Twitter accounts that are tied to that, that those both, both of those. So um, you can follow me on Twitter at JWK Hates the News and at Your Beautiful Mind. Um, like I said, content coming soon. Nice. And don't feel... Feel free to upload these talks that we have every week. Um, yeah, like if you're part of it, you're producing content, you can post these out as well. You have my explicit permission. I, I, might, I might start doing that. Yeah. Uh, Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? Well, so uh, every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, depending on what it is, uh, we live stream this show. Um, so by all means, come on board and have a look, and then you can make comments as, uh, as we're streaming. And then I try to share them as much as I can with, uh, the co-hosts here. Who would I need um, to subscribe to in order to get the, the it channel? Is, it is mind pirate M I N D P Y R A T E. Nice. Very cool. Dale. Do you have any recommendations of stuff we should check out in the next week? You mentioned a lot of, I guess, what I'm imagining, uh, classy dames from, <laughs> from a while back ago. Uh, is there, is there anything that you would recommend that we check out in the next in the next week? No. Cool. All right, <laughs> George. What are you, what is there anything that you would recommend that we check out over, Sorry. over the next week? Yes. Yes, there is. Hmm. Uh, old Doctor Who episodes with nice, me. very. If good. you want to see, if you want to see how much the the production people could accomplish on a very very low budget, hmm. there are some wonderful episode stories, and my favorites are the Brain of Morbius, okay, the Pyramids of Mars, and uh, the Usurians especially that cool and that's cool. enough out of me yeah hey and i i like old school doctor who so i think that's a good pull also old school red dwarf if you guys are even aware of that old that's red a dwarf a lot of stuff i love it yeah time dilation there's probably like four episodes on just that alone six episodes on dreams there's some really good humorous takes on the things that we've been talking about today i highly recommend that yeah um, as for me, uh, Black Lives Matter, and uh, keep thinking about that over the next week. Um, if you're watching my stuff on my channel, uh, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm going to be uploading, finally, my Kentucky Free Thought Convention talks. I wanted to go out and do talks this week, but it started raining over the weekend. I'm just like, oh, that's a shame. So um, there's a guy named Quinn Questions. He's been doing his talks where he's social distancing with a face mask on. I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. I'll try that out when the weather gets a little bit better. But in the meanwhile, I'll have a backlog of talks that I'll be putting on my channel eventually. Uh, Dread Pirate, I'm sorry, Doubter5, the one and only, why don't you take us out? Okay. Oh, wait, 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 I have a quick question. I, I want to know what atheism is all about. And I heard that you were probably an expert on the topic. Is there any book no. that can tell me what atheism is and what it's I all about? I have a book on that very topic. It's called oh, atheism. I hope it doesn't have a complicated title. I really uh, hate atheism. Complicated what's titles. it all about? It's oh, available perfect. On, on Amazon. You should be able to find it there. Perfect. And you can also find a lot of my stuff on my blog at digitalfreethought.com. Uh, we also have our radio show archives there, atheist songs, and many articles on 
the subject. Uh, particularly, I would like to draw your attention to my article on miracles and false memories, uh, as we talked about today. Uh, go to my pages and look for that, miracles and false me memories. Dale's book, although he's uh, not mentioned, it can be found at howjesusdidit.com, and it's about how Jesus did his miracles. Um, not using any magic, of course. And if you're having Stop. trouble leaving your uh, religious beliefs behind, I'd like to recommend going to recoveringfromreligion.org. They do great work there and may offer you help that you need. And if you'd like to listen to prior shows, they're not only available on digitalfreethought.com, but they're also available on iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, Podcast.com, iHeart, etc., etc. And if you have any questions for the show, how many love you'd like to send in, send it to Ask an Atheist at KnoxvilleAtheist.org. We'll answer them on future shows. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> we'll see you next <laughs> week. Uh, say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care of the Stay rational. Bye-bye. Cool.